Hey, we're going to talk about my favorite subject, listing homes. But I'm going to say today is your day to shine, shine bright, shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. That's the song. And uh, today is your day to work. Work well. I'm not biting our dogs on the ground. We rolled our dogs before. We did. Yeah, so those are the things that you should do. Every single day, your life will be much better. And your work will be much better. So all those things work really well in what we're going to talk about today. And what I, are we on Zoom? Does anybody know that? Oh, good. Well, hello, anybody that's on Zoom. We're talking again about how to list homes. And I brought my great listing specialist here with me today. And Kathy, you got those uh, sheets ready for me? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to give you my favorite thing that I keep on my door. And I've told you this before, but this is a Tim Hagel quote, which I would like to steal from him. And if you're going to build your business, if you're going to run a team, this is the quote I need for you to understand and read. And the quote simply says, if you're building a team, there is one one thing that you should be focused on, and that is obtaining listings. Your key metrics is the number one, it's the number of listings taken per month, and outside of that is just a distraction in this business. And this is honestly how I built my business. I believe this very strongly. I think listings are the thing that make you um, steady. Now, I don't mean to detract from buyer's agents. I actually have got some great buyer's agents on my team. And there are some agents that are very suited to buyer's agency. Uh, Daphne is one of them. She's been a top buyer's agent with me for 23 years. And she is just well suited to that. And I believe in specialty. I do believe it. I, you can be a jack of all trades. You can be the master of none. You should try both out and see which one fits you. Uh, it's got to do with production. <laughs> so how many can you do? How fast can you do them? And uh, if it's listings, uh, I can help you with that. If it's buyers, I'd love to bring my best buyers agents up. But today I have brought you my best listing agents and we're going to grill them and ask them all kinds of grueling questions so that we can determine how they became stock listing agents. And so the, the things that we go over in listings um, are, of course, what do you do to get listings? That'd be a good thing to know. How do you get listings? The next thing I do is, what do you do pre-listing appointment? What do you do at the listing? And how do you close at the listing? And any after care? So those are the things that we're going to talk about. And I'm going to let you, you have at them, but I'm going to start out by asking them something they don't think I'm going to ask them. And what I'm going to ask them is, tell me the worst thing that you first mistake that you have ever made in a listing appointment. <laughs> and you didn't get the listing, the worst mistake you ever made in a listing appointment. What did you do wrong? I'll start. Okay. <laughs> it happened not too long ago, actually. Um, and it's, it's one of those things, if you're a perfectionist and a, you know, like I am, it, you can't let it go until you have done it right. Uh, I was on a listing appointment and I knew what I was walking into, yet suddenly the decision maker walked through the door and I did not realize that the person I was meeting was not the decision maker. Mm -hmm. And that's when it fell apart <laughs> because I started wavering, not knowing the motivation of the decision maker and I was trying to get there during the conversation, but there were other people there. And I thought, okay, this is never going to happen to me again. I'm going to know the agenda of the meeting I walk into. That's what Marty taught me. One of my top 10 rules. Know the agenda before you walk into a meeting. So how long ago was that? Four months ago. Okay. Yeah. Took you a little time to learn that little point. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you never really learn. Some people learn. I mean, do you learn driving by doing the written test or do you learn driving when you go out with people? 
you don't, most people learn, a lot of people learn by doing. And unfortunately, some of us are not really, really smart people learn by watching other people make mistakes and they direct their life by saying, I'm not gonna do that. But most of us are like me, they gotta fall in the ditch at least a hundred times before we learn to avoid the ditch. What's the most gross mistake, your biggest mistake, your biggest flop you've ever had hmm. in listing? And there's been many. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably I went on an appointment to a 20 acre piece of property with a beautiful home on it. And that's my, that's what I love, you know? And so it was supposed to be a husband and wife and I got there and it was just the wife. And I said, oh, I wish I would have known that. I would have rescheduled the appointment. Well, the woman, the lady who was the alpha, no doubt, <laughs> did not like that I said that. And she told me, she says, I'm going to tell you what I told the car salesman that told me that I need to go get my husband before I <laughs> And of course, that is not what I meant. Yeah. Okay. But I didn't get the listing. Um, I don't know if that was the reason I didn't get the listings, <laughs> but it was <laughs> one of the top five part. reasons I didn't get the listing. Yeah, that's so just polishing what I say, yeah. you know, yeah. and, uh, and being, you know, I, I'm in, okay. So I'm a really a Neanderthal in a snowflake world. <laughs> you know, I just say what I mean and I don't, I don't, uh, I don't uh, try to sugarcoat it. And, uh, so I've, I've had to learn over the years, Marty, I don't know if you remember this, but when I first started listening with you, I remember coming to you and saying, that guy that I just talked to, he was so rude to me and so nasty to me. And you looked at me and you said, if I could only tell you the people that were rude and nasty to me that I've listed. That's right. And I was offended that this guy was talking to me like I was, you know, a street bum. Yeah. And uh, so those are the things that I've learned. I thought you were gonna ask us what's the worst thing that ever happened. <laughs> Which I was really prepared well, for. I may, I may ask that next. I know that yeah. next. But really, what's, what's the worst thing that ever happened to you? And how did you correct going forward after that mistake? How did you correct your actions going forward? So, because of that experience now, before you. I, I just really try to um, uh, not. Rest I try to. So if I had that interview to do again, mm -hmm. I would have said, oh, that's okay. I'm glad you're here. Let's just go through this. And when your husband is available, I'll be glad to come yeah. back out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's not what I said. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. All right, Devin. <laughs> Biggest mistake. It was recently, and we <laughs> talked about this. It was a couple of months ago. And these sellers called us to list their house. Um, this kind of piggybacks on a lot of what Ward was saying. I think in a, a strong listing agent's personality, you have a lot of just high D drive, just get it done. Yeah. Get the paperwork signed, let's sign up, let's go. And then people take that personality sometimes, especially in this market, and they cannot handle it. So, <laughs> <laughs> walk in do this do that please. yeah yeah so i went on on this appointment these folks had had their house listed last year for several months and only had two or three showings no offers didn't sell and they wanted to sell it for a higher price this year and already i was like are you kidding in my mind i'm sitting here like are you kidding me this is not gonna work but you know, I'm biting my tongue and I'm usually very good about having a poker face, but when it gets to that level, it's really hard to hide it. And so um, <laughs> went on the appointment and it was another situation less like Desiree said, I had not talked to both spouses. I talked to one spouse ahead of time. So this was like key point number one. Um, and I think Marty brought in Steve to kind of piggyback on this about a good learning point is try and get both spouses on the phone separately before you go. Yeah. And so that was a big one. And 
the wife apparently was the decision maker whom I had not talked to yet by the time I got there. And she just um, wouldn't let us take a tour of the house, which is highly unusual. Uh, that's actually never happened. And um, it was, she was very ice cold and I was trying my best to help warm her up. And um, you could tell there was just a rigidness with her. So we get, and we, and I go through everything and talk about it. And then when I get the price, I used a um, script line that we've learned before, <laughs> but it was the wrong one. <laughs> I said, well, we have to make a decision today. We have to decide if we're going to stay in fantasy land or oh, be in reality. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like you dump ice down the room. <laughs> a whoosh. And it was just the, the whole tune just changed like that. And uh, once I started going through the numbers, um, she got really combative and I kept bringing it back to, well, these are the numbers that the market is saying. Um, I'm just interpreting the market. And um, I mean, after that, she's like, we're not selling our house for that. And it was done, <laughs> silent. And I knew it was over. So we got up and left. and. She had a lot more to say after that, yeah. <laughs> and, um, but you know, Marty and I had a good talk about it because it was a big awareness for me of my facial expression. Because, like I said, usually I have a very good poker face, but when it gets to that level, it's tough. Got to be some James Bond yes. in you. Yes. How much, how much over was she wanting? She, she, probably seventy-five, eighty, hundred thousand. A lot a lot a lot down in a very remote area so yeah <laughs> and, okay yeah so keep your poker face um be, be james bond because mm -hmm. uh you never let them see you sweat and you really never let them see yeah. your emotions it's it's like i was actually talking to an agent the other day because i had a um a call because i get all the stuff rolls downhill so i get calls when stuff goes wrong so I hear something, this and another. Here, here's an example. You've, you've had a rough day. You're meeting with a client, buyer or a seller, and you tell your client, you know, really, I've, I've worked hard today and, and I drove an hour and a half to get here uh, today. Newsflash, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care. And you shouldn't be telling them your personal stuff. Mm -hmm. You actually should not be telling them. I know all this relationship selling is going on, but you're the professional. So you don't let that slip. You're trying to build a relationship by making those comments and it's just not relative to the situation. So they will use it yeah. against you. They will use it yeah. against yeah. you. I would say the other thing about that appointment that was a good takeaway is when you come up against a strong female and you're a female, you gotta back down even though it's not in your nature to back down, you just have to kind of just chill out and breathe and just kind of bring that softness and that buttery smile back in yeah. and just sugar it up. Even if you know, sitting there that this is not gonna work, you gotta gracefully back out and still may have them like you. Yeah, that's exactly right. They gotta, they gotta like you, they gotta trust you to do business with you. So no matter what you do, you've got to go walk away with a good feeling in that. So let's talk about this, how to get the listings. I know you can, we're, we're fortunate in our team to phone rings, but I want to ask, your life depends on it. Something that you care about will go terribly wrong if you don't get five new listings in the next 45 days. What do you do, Devin? I think uh, the preparation ahead of time is um, extremely important. They have to have a number of touches from you uh, when you first, before the appointment. And you have to be very enthusiastic on the phone, um, you know, pre-qualifying them up front to find out their motivation. And, you know, that's very, very key to make sure it's going to be a good fit as far as you can see. And then, you know, once you schedule the appointment and you've pre-qualified them, you've got to keep following up to the appointment because this is their first taste of you. This is their first experience with you of, who you are as a professional and how they will expect to be treated by you. Right. Okay, but I'm talking about how to get the like listing. The listing. Something really bad is going to happen if you don't get five listings in the next 45 days. What do you do? Yeah, that's going to be a catastrophe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is not a good. And you can't steal my. <laughs> I've only had them once. <laughs> 
I think it's having a conversation with the sellers or seller um, and leading them to where you want them to go without them knowing you're leading them. Amen. So really to me is I just ask, try to ask the right questions and every question I'm asking is trying to glean from them what I need to do. I'm trying to find out what's important to them. I'm trying to find out their timeline. I'm trying to find out if they've got any money <laughs> to fix the house. You yeah. know, I'm trying to find out if they're, if, the, if, you know, somebody in the house is on death's door, you know, there's a motivation there. And, and sometimes that's real simple. This house is too big. We want a smaller house, but mm -hmm. I know, I'm not, I know what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes that's, that's uh, not apparent. So just asking the right questions. And we talked about this yesterday. It's doing a lot of listening, yeah. you know, it's just letting them tell their story yeah. because once you open that door, a lot of people will just gush yes. to the point where you're ready to kill yourself. You, know? <laughs> you, you don't want to know all these things, <laughs> you know? And uh, so, and, and also Mary was really good at this. Mm -hmm. um, she is good at this is, and is paying attention to the house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have a, I have a, in the, in the car industry, it's called a unit. I have a product. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that product is that house, yeah. you know, and when I'm walking through the house, um, things that I'm passionate about, it's not fake. It's not pretense. I try to connect with that and then let them tell me about whatever that is. Yeah. And it's been, it's been a, it's been American flags, you know, where someone has died in a war or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so it's building the rapport, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to get the listing, they got to like you, like Devin said, uh, they got to trust you and they got to feel confident that you are the person that's going to represent them in one of the biggest transactions of their life, yes. you know, Absolutely. and it, it is a huge responsibility. And I think about this, I think about salesmen that sell vacuum cleaners and whatever, you know, when I walk into a house and I bring out a listing agreement, someone has tentatively wrote me a check or the Marty Hampton team a check for thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. That's huge. It is. I mean, it really is huge. Yeah. We're not selling vacuum cleaners, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so it, it, and if you, if you do it right, it, it's the, it's like right now I've got two deals to where we're the listing agent and we got a referral on the house that they're buying in other states. You know, so it's just like, it's almost, and I didn't start out at this level, please believe me, I didn't, but it's just asking the right questions. You know, it's being concerned about the whole process yeah. instead yeah. of just some of the process. Right, right, instead of just signing the paperwork and, and right. mentally checking out until the offer comes in. Exactly. Which is a lot of what a lot of agents do. Back to getting the listings. I'm, I'm, you got to get five listings. Something bad's going to happen. And, and then I need to go and get leads too, right? Yes. Because I need yes. to get yeah. leads right. and answers. Right. I'm going to door knock. Okay. Because I think a personal touch right now is, is key. Um, if you've got successes, and yes. you do, we have many successes right now. So it's actually pretty easy to door knock and say, hey, I just sold the house next door. Right. And having that personal touch and being respectful. Um, I think will help us get more listings yes. that way. So I would definitely door knock and not just call because I feel like the entire triangle is on the phone trying to get leads right now mm -hmm. and a phone call is not going to cut it. Yeah. Um, I would call all my past clients, especially buyers that I've helped buy homes in the last five years. Yes. They're most likely to sell. And if they're not selling, maybe the neighbor is or the aunt is or someone else is. But yeah, I would definitely not deep dive into the database because those are the people that are going to refer people to you because you hopefully treated them right. Desiree is my top listing agent. She does everything with a very high level of excellence. And you also had some success recently with open houses. So tell them about that. I did. I did. I have my own <laughs> listing open. And I uh, don't always do that, but I do like to do that in neighborhoods that I want to farm somehow. And this was happened to be in the belt line, but held it open. We had a lot of traffic come through, but we also had neighbors come through and they happened to be in the market to sell their house. And so I set an appointment. 
That's right. Yep. And so exactly. that happens a lot. Yeah, so it's a mindset doing that open house. And then yesterday we just had a call yep. from one that was sold and they had watched the soul sign go up across the street. So business begets business. That's the reason you want to be around talented agents. Frankly, that's the reason you want to be with EXP <laughs> because talent pushes talent. And that's the reason we've got 20% of the top 20 agents in the triangle. I'm just saying it's a factor. Okay, the pre-list before you get there. What do you absolutely have to do before you get walk in the door? What's your? I won't. I won't go to this house unless this happens. I priced it. Look at the market. So you you decided on the price before you walk in the door. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you do? I, I I can't say that I've priced it before I walked in the door. I look. I try to find out what's sold around it that looks like it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I got to be inside the house to get a feel of the house and the property. And a lot of times you're looking at tax records and they don't have the fact that the guy just spent $50,000 on a 40 by 40 shop out there, you know? So there's things that I take into consideration when I get there. Um, it's looking at restrictions. It's looking at covenants. It's looking at HOAs. It's looking at, uh, is it in a watershed? Oh my God, that's huge. Uh, is it in a flood zone? So there's so much, there's a lot of moving targets out there. And you're either going to do your homework before you get there. Listen, when I walk into a listing appointment and I've already got the HOA president's name, phone number, email, and how much it is, that's showing that seller that I've done my homework. That's exactly I know right. what's going Very on. Very nice. I will even type in the neighborhood and I will say history of blah, blah, blah. And I'll try to Google it. Because, man, this neighborhood was established in 1962. <laughs> You know, and the guy that started it. And so it just adds credibility. It so it's little things. It is. You know. I'm impressed already. That's right. What do you no, absolutely the number one thing is knowing their motivation on price. Because if they have the idea that their house is worth a million dollars and I know it's worth four hundred, that's that gap is too big to overcome. They're not motivated to move, then mm -hmm. I don't need to take the appointment because there's no need to. Yeah. So I like uh, Devin's, uh, the line that we've used for like a hundred years in real estate. We can either be in reality or in fantasy land. I think the whole market's in fantasy land now. So I don't know what you're thinking, yeah, but uh, if you're ever going to take a, a chance on an overpriced listing, this is the time of year to do it. This is the market to do it. But yeah, yeah, just in terms of knowing the motivation on price, do you do you have the seller share with you what their, I guess, dream price would be or what they would want to get the home prior to you Absolutely. 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 It's, it's, it's real, we have a free qualification script, and I don't maybe not go on exactly that order, but I do ask every single question, and I want because I want to know why are they selling, where are they moving to. Do they have a mortgage on the property? Have they had upgrades done to the property? And where are the, why are they moving? Are they moving to see the grandkids? Well, there's your motivation, and then you'll know. Well, to, to get to the price, I mean, I've heard Marty do it. We all do it. It's like, so you've lived in this house, you built this house, whatever. Uh, what do you think it's worth? Mm -hmm. You know, and people are proud to tell you what they think it's worth. <laughs> So they'll, they'll come back to you and they'll say, well, that's why I'm going to hire a real estate agent. Yeah. And I'd say, and that's a good choice, but you still have an idea of how much your, your property is worth. You know, I'm going to show you what the market is going to bear, but I'd really like to know where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. What's it's going to take for you to move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause they want to sell it. So we're going to have to come to a price every now and then. And I haven't told them what I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great way to do it. I always do that. I always ask them, what do you want for your house? And so if they give me a resistance past that, I'll say, look, I had never talked to a seller that didn't have a range in mind. Mm -hmm. And yes, I'm going to do my work and I'm going to give you an opinion of value, but what do you want for your house? Mm -hmm. And they'll, then they'll tell me or they'll keep resisting. If they keep resisting, I'll, I won't press them um, much past the third or fourth time. I will press them that much. Yeah. So, all right, the next thing, what do you do at the listing appointment? What are your, what, what's your routine? What do you do? Show up on time. That's <laughs> mine. Yeah. <laughs> Smile. Yeah. Okay. How do you do, how do you do it? 
I mean, what do you do? Well, I just go to the front door and um, I have my briefcase. I have the two or three things I need in there. And uh, you always have your phone on silent. But the only reason I have it is for a calculator. That's it and a calendar. But, um, and they come to the door and go, hi, it's so <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you for having me over. I really appreciate you inviting me to your house. Can I come in? <laughs> and it's really warm and nice. And, you know, try and say, okay, well, where would you like for us to sit down and talk tonight? And wherever they're comfortable is where you're going to want to go, but ideally at a table. Um, so then you, I put my stuff down and say, okay, great. Well, listen, what I'd like to do is if you could take, give me a tour around your house. Um, I want to get a good idea of, um, you know, what's in here and you can give me the grand tour and then we'll come back and sit down and talk about everything. So I take my notebook and I just make notes while we go through the house and they show me everything and do all, they do all the talking and I, that's nice. Great. Oh, buyers love that. Mm -hmm. And, um, just kind of validate that I like the house too. And one of the key things I say when we come back and sit down is I know we can sell your house because I feel like they need to hear that. It's the first, one of the next points of confidence they have in us that we're validating. Yes, we can sell your house because you don't realize that's actually a fear in their head um, until you say it and you see that body language drop and that comfort come out. So then um, we'll go into, you know, I'll just kind of reiterate the agenda and we go back through the qualifying questions to make sure everybody's on the same page and just kind of set the tone. Um, and then we go through the four options of selling the house. Um, and I say, well, which one works for you? And uh, then we move into pricing and we go through that and I show them the comps. So they see the pictures and everything. I think pictures really tell the story. And then I'll say, okay, well, based on what you've seen, what do you think your house, if you were a buyer in this market shopping for your house or a house like yours, what do you think would be the best price to give your house the best value? And I just shut up and listen. So when I ask those questions, I stay quiet. They have to answer first. And uh, then they will say something. I say, okay, great. Well, let's run through what you could get at closing. So I don't ever talk about commission. I just put it in the net sheet. And sometimes I'll say, was that, you know, this percentage? And I'll say, yes, that is. And, um, but we go through the net sheet and I'll say, okay, what do you think of that? And um, they'll, you know, oh, that looks really good. Okay, well, are you ready to get started? And so of course, that's when you're gonna find out where they stand. Um, and hopefully you've covered all as many objections as you can up front, but you have also validated what they are looking for in an agent through your presentation because those qualifying questions of what they expect in an agent are things that you definitely need to hit on of how you can um, bring that service. Okay. Or how do you do it? So Steve Powers said one time, he said, don't sell the blah, blah, if you can sell the blah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's always oh, stuck with one. me. Yeah. That's always stuck with me. And so, and, and not saying right or wrong, but the seller's net sheet is the blah, blah, okay? Uh, actually, the price in some circumstances can be the blah, blah. I have built out complete listing packages. And the last thing I do, when everything's been signed, I'll say, okay, based on our discussion, what do you want to list this house for? And my pen is right there, there where it go. says contract list price. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I haven't really brought up anything. Okay. I haven't showed them what they're going to make, how much it's going to have them cost. Well, Ward, how much commission do you charge? There you go. Well, it depends on the market area, and we're either going to get 3% or 3.6%. What do you mean? Uh, that's right. We Unless we sell it on both sides, we're going to get 3 to 3.6%. I said, now that buyer's agent, that's a great line. he's going to get two down. or two, he's going to get between <laughs> 2.4 and 3%. Okay. And so I'm not the bad guy now. I, I'm not getting 6%, you know. So there's just ways of answering a question to soften the blow. Okay? That's a great line. And I'm not going to answer a question mm -hmm. if they don't ask me, because okay. that's the blah blah. Okay. Okay. Can you repeat that? Just you said that's a great line. Can you? I missed some of it. Oh, Ward, what is your commission? 
Well, it depends on the market area, but in this area, it's either going to be three to 3.6%. And I mean, face it, they just drop. I know. You know? Mm -hmm. They yeah. drop, but that's, that is a truthful answer. That is a very What am I answer. going to charge? Yeah. Okay. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know? That's right. So anyway, <laughs> it's right. just, you get there, you ought, you've, you've got your gun is loaded. Yeah. Your gun is loaded. Yeah. You know what to shoot at. I love it. Okay. And after they tell you and open up and you've built that report, they've given you more ammunition. Yeah. Okay. And so I'm leading this conversation to where I want it to go. Okay. And it's not about price. It's not about commission. It's not about any of those things. Okay. Unless they make it. About those things. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. What do you do at a listing appointment, Desiree? You sometimes you've stayed for hours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first of all, I have all my paperwork filled out ahead of time. It's highlighted where they need to sign mm -hmm. because I am trying to minimize the amount of time that I'm there. Uh -huh. and yes, I'm there. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I show up on time. I drive. I park in the street, never in the driveway. I think it's disrespectful unless they're inviting to do so. Knock on the door and I do the same thing Devin does. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me to your lovely home. Can you please show me around your home and give me the grand tour? And while we're walking through, can you please list all the updates that you've done to the rooms? And I take notes. A lot of notes. I don't say anything. I take a lot of notes. Because Marty has taught me, I don't talk. <laughs> Just smile and nod. <laughs> and then Sit down at the kitchen table, dining room table. Sometimes I'm stuck on a couch somewhere. I'd rather not be, but hey, I've got my clipboard to write on. Um, but then I just talk to them. When do you want to move? How do you see this process happening? Do you want to move out of your home first? Do you want to put it on the market first? Do you need to cash out? So whatever their timeline and motivation is, that's why I spend all my time. And once we get it straight and I figure out where they, where they want to be, I'll come up with a marketing plan. Well, how does this sound to you? It will take us about so many days to get pictures and videos done. We can put you on comingsoonhomes.com. We can pre-market your home. And you can tell me when you're ready to open the doors. And we can do enough to put a sign up until you're ready. So those are all questions I ask them. And I allow them to fill in the blanks. Once we have that whole plan in place, I say, well, let's get started. All we need to do now is sign the paperwork. That's her close. I like it. I like it. So when you sit down, you go basically, you go back over the green sheet, our famous green sheet, and you say, this is what I know about you. Tell me again, if we're, we're, we want to move, we want to be there by September 1st uh, for the kids to be in school, whatever, whatever the deal is. Um, and you ask them all those questions, you start all over again. That is fantastic. All right, the close. It's my favorite part. <laughs> what are your best closing lines? Awards you've already given me one. You got any others? Well, I mean, mission. That's an objection to the commission. But how do you close? Well, yeah. So at this point in time, usually nine times out of ten, we're sitting somewhere. Uh, Oh, I forgot to mention this. I walk in with my lockbox like it's a trophy. <laughs> okay. So I take that lockbox and I sit it up there for God and the world to sit. <laughs> All right. So um, why do you need a lockbox? Because I'm going to list your one, right? <laughs> um, and I've done that since I started. And I've never had anybody have any, I mean, I've seen people actually stop and look at it. So you know, when it's sitting right beside the rooster and the chicken on the kitchen table. <laughs> anyway, um, I ask for the business uh -huh. or I suggest, I said, based on what you've told me, if I was sitting in your set of circumstances wanting to do what you want to do and accomplish, the first thing I would do is get the home on coming soon. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Coming soon is my get out of jail card free. Okay, it answers every question. There's not any objection that I can't overcome uh, without coming soon. Okay, right. Right. and so, and that is one of the first things that I lead off with in the listing appointment. So I slide that little one piece of paper back over the table 
And I said, you know, we looked at this in the beginning. If that, if this was me based on your circumstances and what you told me you wanted to accomplish, the first thing I would do is put the home in coming soon. That's a close. That's a close. Okay. And so usually, I mean, you know, they're sitting, yep, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And I'm already taking out the paperwork. Right. Okay. Do you have I, a, a you, do you sign certain paperwork first? Do you, oh, absolutely. Okay, what do you, what do you absolutely. Sign first? The first thing I want to do is I want to get L husband to fill out that residential property disclosure statement. <laughs> okay. Um, I have never, <laughs> I might be sexist, but I don't want, okay. Anyway, I'm what? not going to I'm not going to Anyway, so the guy's filling out the residential property disclosure statement. And, uh, and I will say, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, White, uh, I'm going to multicast here. And while he's filling this out, I'm going to go over the listing paperwork yeah. with you. And Mr. Smith, if you hear something that you don't understand or you need to ask a question about, I'll yeah. stop. You got to organize. You so gotta I'm multitasking. Right I'm yeah. multitasking. Yeah, I like it. So I'm getting her to initial and uh -huh. sign everything uh -huh. while he's working on the resident property disclosure okay. statement. Yeah. Yeah. And he's asking me questions and I'm bouncing back to her. Okay, so I'm center stage. I'm usually right in between them. Okay, I'm standing up and I'm leaning down low and I'm explaining all this. And by the time he's done and he's signed, okay, I'm sliding our RPDS over to her and I'm sliding the listing paper over, paperwork over to him. His wife's already signed it. He's gonna sign he's it. He's gonna sign it. Okay, please bear in mind, a lot of times I've not put the list price on that contract yet. Oh, wow. I haven't done it. Yeah, he's done this before, guys. He's, he's yeah. listed a lot of homes, so that's incredible. Yeah. But um, having the paperwork filled out, you know, is, and I, honestly, I like to handwrite mine. I really do. Yeah. Because it's not as, to me, it's not as business like. It's right. not a contract. Right. You know, and uh, yeah. I don't know. That's good. That's so. good. Everybody's got their, their vibe. How do you close them out, Devin? I've got them right down into the listing agreement and I have, mine is a little bit backwards. I kind of start with the listing agreement and I put it right in front of them. It's already handwritten, filled out. So all they've got to do is sign and I put the pen out and um, say, okay, we, let's get started. <laughs> all we have to do is get the, you know, take care of this and we can get started today. And so that a lot of times, you know, if they're all in agreement, they'll look at each other and say, Okay, mm -hmm. and they just pick it up and start signing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think there's a lot of agents out there that will continue talking rather mm -hmm. than closing. They will mm -hmm. talk themselves past the close. Yeah. So having the confidence to close is really, really important. Um, yeah. Um, Devin, I remember one of my coaching a while back, Steve's talking about like real nice pen, yeah. <laughs> and that, yeah. if you use anything special there. Um, I tried that and the seller stole my pens. <laughs> Sounds like Marty. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out he collected those pens and he thought I brought them as a gift and I just didn't say anything. There you go. You got the list. Yeah. There you so if you want to get really strong, you put your lock box out there and you take those, at least the three pens you've got. Yeah. and set one in front of each of oh, them. Oh, more than one pen, absolutely. Oh yeah, I you gotta, more than one you gotta pen. have more than one pen. <laughs> you I love have. it. How do you close, Desiree? Um, once we set the marketing plan, I'm like, I am so excited to get started. Let's get this done, okay? And I pull out my paperwork and I slide it across the table. <clears throat> and I explain every page to them. Yeah. Takes long. That's what yeah. I tell them. I don't want you to sign anything that I haven't explained to you. No blind signing. Yeah, I do that too. But I don't say these are the things on this page. There's only usually yeah, one or two. Just, <laughs> just check this out. Yeah. The initial at the bottom. Yeah. I've already highlighted. But I have a box for pens, a nice looking one, and I pull out the nice pens and I. Ooh, ooh, I like it. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. I am uh, typed. And I used to pen. say. Uh, when I was doing the disclosure, who's the detail person that can tell me the most about this house between you two? And, and a lot of times it's the man, but a lot of times it's the wife. I want you to fill out the property mm -hmm. disclosure. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll start with the other one. So who's the detail person? Another way to close, any other ways to close? Um, well, there's always objections, right? Mm -hmm. You need yeah. to think about it, it's the worst one. Mm -hmm. Well, let's think about it. Mm -hmm. Tell me a question. Yeah, While absolutely. I'm here, I can answer them. Right. 
and just recently read a really cool tip about, oh, just hang on a second. I have one piece of marketing uh, I'd like to leave with you. Walk out to the car, they're talking. Right. You come back, and then usually at that point when you ask again, should we get started? They're like, yeah, let's yeah. just do this. And another, they have a moment to talk. Right, and another close I've used is, when do you think you'll be ready to open the doors for showings? And uh, I've, I've said that before. Okay, in order to open the doors for showing on April 1st, we need to go on coming soon home right now. We won't open the doors till April 1st. So this is when I'm filling in the contract and giving it to them. Mm -hmm. I love this. I love the closing part. Aftercare. What do you do after you get that listing signed? <laughs> Turn it into the list. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And that's, that's right. when it sometimes gets a little sticky. So you got to kind of manage your time there. But yeah. we've got a great team. And so with different people from the team calling, mm -hmm. it does help. But I have one call rotation. So the first week they get three calls from me. And then after that, they'll get a call every week with an update. I think that's great uh, advice. You'll have some people that are needy in that. But calling the first um, three times in the first week, I think, is good customer care. And I think they'll they'll get that from you. Okay, y'all, we've got just a few more minutes. I'm going to open it up to questions from you. What do you want to know about listing property? I have one question. Mm -hmm. Of course, with everything going on in the last several months, All right? Has there been, I guess, with each of you guys, one pivot, one thing that you changed with everything going on in the market, and just mm -hmm. to see how wild the how wild the seller market is? Mm -hmm. What's been the one pivot you, for each of you guys? Giving them more, giving them the options and biting my tongue on my opinion. <laughs> they don't want to hear your opinion, apparently. It's, it just hurts too much. <laughs> Not in this market. They've got more range. I mean, yeah. that's true that sellers have the power in this market. So we're having to, instead of going in and say, okay, that's got to go, that's got to go, which is what, how you used to list property. Mm -hmm. And they wanted that command. They want to know you can sell. Mm -hmm. So you have to show your sales skills during the listing. Mm -hmm. But uh, you give them more range during this type of market. That's well, for sure. I think what Deb was saying, biting your tongue. So there's, you know, we all have our preferences of, of the do's and the don'ts and the core and all that. But really, I don't have no opinion on any of that. I'm going to get Stephanie out there and let her be the bad guy. Oh, yeah. Okay. 100%. Let your stager be the bad guy. If there are deer head and rhino head and skunk head <laughs> mounted all over the house, <clears throat> boy, that's the darnest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Do you think those need to come down? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. You know, and so Mary, and I love her to death, she lost the listing once, lost the listing because she told the woman that the room color basically sucked. Right. <laughs> so I don't, I mean, if that's a purple and green, yellow wall, it's like, man, that is so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't stage an appointment. Yeah. And, and some of them will try and press you for it. Yeah. They want you to go through a stage they and do. you have to back out very gracefully and say, we will help you with that. We yeah. have a professional have a stage. Prof I said, I can, mm -hmm. one of my favorite lines is I can't even pick out a paint swatch. I said, right. I pick out a swatch, it goes on a wall, it looks completely different. So I don't do that, but we've got right. a stage that does a great job. Of right. It. Absolutely. So you'll see it. You want to know why? <laughs> because I've got the listing now. Yes. If Stephanie hurts their feelings, okay. and oh by God, mm -hmm. Stephanie can't hurt their feelings. I, didn't I know hear she it all the time. Could. Oh my oh, goodness. Yeah. We we really didn't care for Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> if they're gonna say that about somebody on our team, I don't want it to be me. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's awesome. That's Guys, any questions? We're going to close. Uh, Great. Yes. So, what do you do if the seller is supposed to buy a house first, especially in this market? Mm -hmm. Put question. their house on coming soon homes. Yeah. Put it out there. Do they have to sell or buy? They need to buy and sell. They need do to they buy. have to sell? Yes. So they to buy. They need buy. to sell and buy. 
Okay, so you can't get your cart your cart before your horse. Yeah, that's okay, right. so they can't perform on what they need to buy until they sell. Mm -hmm. Okay, in this market, a contingent offer is like the weakest offer on God's yeah. earth. It, it's not going to get accepted. Okay, especially if the home's not listed. Then it needs to be under contract with a closing date. You really need to be past due diligence. So these are the things, the urgency. What's their motivation for selling? What's their motivation for moving? You can create urgency knowing those things. Okay. So that's my question as well, just to piggyback off of her. I think my question mainly is like the time frame. So I'm running into a lot of sellers who have to sell in order to buy. They've got a time frame of when they want to be in their new home. And they're wondering, well, when should we get the home listed with a good time frame so that we're able to buy and close on this new home within this time frame? And I'm always like, in this market, you know, what do you what are you guys usually doing in terms of time frame on when the home needs to be listed to sell so that they can get permission to be in the time frame? That That's there's, a great question. Yeah, it is, but there's a lot of things behind that question. Okay, mm -hmm. what's the condition of the home that they're going to sell? That's one. Okay, um, so it's just you got to ask the right questions. But coming soon, oh my God, we're back to coming soon. You know what? Most sellers really freak out when they know they've got to do the things that we've talked about doing, but don't worry about it. Cause look, this house has been on coming soon for less than 30 days. There's already been 2,500 people. Look at that. It's a great question though, because what we need to do more, what I'm starting to do is just take advantage of the market, put them on coming soon. And they're most likely going to get offers during that coming soon phase because our inventory is too low. Right. And then you have the ability to negotiate the terms. And so you can say, look, we'd what love that? to close now, but stay in the house for 60 days, mm -hmm. rent free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they have 60 days to find themselves a the house. Yeah. So a question that we get asked all the time, what's the most important thing that, for your sellers? What's going to win the offer? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I get asked that almost weekly i get asked weekly for I sure um, <laughs> you oh yeah should. you should yeah. because sometimes yeah. it is not just the price, the price. no the price. not at all sometimes it's staying in the house for six months right. and that you share it before us back to the recast yes mm -hmm. i think in a recast mine i was it's, talking to another lender about this and that is like it is it is so when i have a seller in that position um we talk about options and kind of create plan a b c d and f um, and I try and help them understand that flexibility is key because we don't have a crystal ball and we don't know exactly how this will pan out, but having, you know, your ideal situation that we aim for, but also backup plans is, is very, very key. And what I want to hear is that they are okay with temporary housing, should it come to that. But, um, one of the things that I try and find out is if they would be a candidate for this product called a recast loan. If they have 5% to put down right now without selling and they have at least a 640 credit score, they likely qualify and they can go buy house number two without selling number one, move into house number two, then we can actually show it vacant. So you have another strategy of selling that because then they don't have to deal with showings. They move into house number two, we get house number one on the market, sell it, they take the equity from one, put it into two, it re-amortizes the loan without refinance costs. And they can do that multiple times. And the fee's like 200 bucks, 250 bucks, so it's not far. Yeah. You got rid of you got all these companies, but the recast loan is going to save your client a lot of money. Yes. Time. And typically you close, like you can really work it out where you close that same day. Yes. As, um, if it all comes together, right? Yeah, that's a great option, but all that comes down to educating your mm -hmm. seller that wants yeah. to be a buyer how it's going to be a little bit different than it used to be. You can't buy contingent now mm -hmm. in this kind of market, and that's the same thing. And I always put it back on the other foot. I said, when we get an offer on your home, let's say we've got five offers, and two of them are cash, and three of them are um, something else, and, and one of them is contingent, which one are you going to throw out first? <laughs> And it's going to be the contingent one. So that's what we're up against when we're buying. And if you're trying to sell at three fifty and buy at four fifty or five hundred thousand, you've got that problem all over, all over. So you've got to get them in the mood for getting the highest price out of your house. Is going to help us 
negotiate. Another thing you can do is the due diligence that goes once their house goes under contract. There's a due diligence amount. Get that due diligence as high as you can. Use the same amount for the house they're going to purchase. That way, they really don't lose any money if something happens. So all those tactics are great. One more last question. We're going. Um, how do you protect your sellers? It's, it's a multiple multiple offer scenario, right? You're getting a lot of um, bidding war. How do you protect your sellers if you get, let's say, 50,000, 60,000 over asking, and then that pays okay to the value based on your market value? Like, how do you, what type of addendum contract to protect the sellers? Actually, we had a price that was in here the other day. Mm -hmm. I was talking about that. Justin was talking about a product mm -hmm. where he could do that. And there are those uh, addendums where the buyer agrees, but I would go back to the beginning. I would look at the buyer type. If a buyer that's putting five percent down is offering me twenty thousand over that, I'm wondering if they've got the cash to do it. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back to the lender. I want to research the buyer's lender. If I have any question at all, I want to. I want, I want to put them in a corner and put a bright light on them and say, "What's your name? Where are you going? Are you really going to close this loan? Have you looked at the details, or is this just been something that you've done for the service?" And so your reputation. So you call the buyers' yeah. um, lender yeah. to make sure they yeah. have a solid yeah. finance. Yeah. Ask for proof of funds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. and proof of funds and prequal, same thing. But if they, if if you think you're going to have an appraisal issue and they've given you a pretty uh, list, a uh, contract sales price. Mm -hmm. How are they going to perform? Mm -hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, what if it doesn't appraise? Mm -hmm. right. Okay, which I'm always worried about. I don't care if I believe 100% it's done appraise. Do you guys I'm have a problem worried. with that? Like, let's say the appraisal came low and the seller came to an agreement halfway. Absolutely. Yeah. In this market, absolutely. Most mm -hmm. things are going, I, I closed one last week, it's 10,000 over appraised value. Right. The buyer brought ten thousand to the closing table, mm -hmm. so it's not unheard of right now. No, no, it's not. But if you have a VA loan or a FHA loan or a USDA loan, nine times out of ten, those buyers don't have no money. Take them so, to Wilson. Benson is good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had uh, we just closed on one over asking with a VA loan, <gasps> but they waived the appraisal rights, yeah. and it and it held. And they, they brought money so to the table. So what I did is, is um, I have listings too, but most of my listings are going 10, 20, you know, more than asking. But um, I did consult with the lawyer. So we do have a price value and then they, like, I always tell the buyers, like, look, if you're putting a multi, you know, like over asking price, is your buyers prepared for this? And most of the time, they're, all of my offers has a vendor attached. That's so why I'm asking, like, do you guys have like a denim? Do you come halfway? Like, what's your strategy? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Try to get good. away as That's good. much as possible. Mm -hmm. Y'all yeah. give my great listing hands a hand. They did a great job. Thank you for coming today.